this episode on the Scrap Mechanist Featured Creators. Clear for landing. Clear for landing. Coming in for a super realistic landing. Nailed it. Taking Scrap Mechanic Engineering to the next level. Eru the Engineer. All right, we got the shot. Stop the cart. Stop, stop the, stop the, stop the cart. Uh, you're killing me here. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Scrap Mechanics channel. This episode, we are featuring another creator who goes by Eru the Engineer. Now, this episode is going to be a little bit different as far as featured creators go because I think I'm only going to have time for this one creation. And the reason is because I have an opportunity here to teach you guys some really cool stuff about helicopter physics. Because believe it or not, what Eru has managed to do is create the mechanism that real helicopters actually use to control their pitch and their roll and their lift. Uh, and it actually works just like a real helicopter would. I was actually surprised that the physics is, is pretty similar in the game as it is in real life. So I'm going to go ahead and fly this thing around now to show you what it looks like first, showing, showing you in action. Now I have my particles turned off, so... Um, you won't see the actual thrusters uh, shooting out their flames. But so the only thing I'm going to let you guys in on how this is working. The only thing that that this mechanism is not going to be controlling is the yaw. So that means this kind of turning right here. This is glitch steering, but everything else pitching forward and back and left and right. That is all controlled by that thing in the middle of this aircraft. So we're going to go ahead and lift off here. So this is being controlled by that swash plate in the middle. All right, so you can see it's somewhat stable, actually. It's not too bad. Uh oh, I don't know why that's going on. We might need to give ourselves a little bit less up thrust. All right, Let's see if we can pitch forward a little bit here. There we go. All right, so now I'm leveling off. I'm gonna go ahead and roll right. Gonna pitch back a little bit, go up a little bit more. So you can see it's it's pretty maneuverable. Like it it's slow. Like it's not quick uh, quick actions. But if you take it slow, you have control over everything that you need. So it it actually kind of looks like a real helicopter. It's flying around. Just like a real hel helicopter would. All right, so I'm gonna try to take us in for a landing down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, lower us down. Now, to gain lift and to uh, lose lift, like I'm doing right now, you can see I'm falling. That has nothing to do with how much thrust is going on. It's all the same exact amount of thrust in the thrusters. I'm not activating any more thrusters. I'm not deactivating thrusters. All I'm doing is controlling this mechanism in the middle of the aircraft here. So we're gonna go ahead and try to land ourselves. Hopefully, hopefully a nice soft landing. All right. A little bit more. All right, it wasn't too bad. Okay, gonna kind of turn it off here. Now the frames tend to drop when it's not in motion. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset it on a lift first. All right, so. I'm really excited about this part because I've I've uh, learned a little bit about how helicopters work a while ago and it kind of blew my mind and now I have a chance to kind of give you guys a glimpse of how amazing helicopters really are and how complex it actually is like you have no idea so if, you, if you haven't um, learned this before you probably have no idea the complexity of the interaction that goes on with this thing here. And that's why I'm amazed that Eru was able to build this in the game. And as far as I know, 
I think this is the first one of these that was built in the game, and other people since then have actually made their own um, versions of it as well. So what does a swashplate do? Well, I'm going to show you right now. So you can see we have thrusters uh, attached to these propellers, to these rotor blades, and that is because we don't have any air resistance, so to supplement the air resistance, we just use thrust instead. So what happens if I want to go up, I need, I need some thrust downwards. I need the thrusters to point downwards so that they can push me up. So if I, if I move this entire swash plate, watch, I'll move it up just like this. And what that does, you can now see that all of the thrusters start to point down. And that's going to give more upwards thrust, which raises me. And we call this collective pitch, because collectively, every single rotor blade angles in the same direction, which causes... In real life, it to catch more of the wind, but in scrap mechanic, to aim more of the thrust downwards so that we can push ourselves up. And if I want to gain, if I want to lower myself a little bit or level off, I just give it a little bit less downward thrust, and then we're back to our starting position here. All right. So now, what if I want to do pitch and roll? How do I do that? How do I do that with the same thrusters keeping the same power? Now, if you look at the swash plate here, if I press my pitch and roll buttons, watch what happens. You can see it'll dip forward. It'll dip back. It'll dip to the sides, back and forth. Now, here is the amazing part that blew my mind when I first found out about this stuff. All right, check this out. If I want to pitch it in one direction to the side like this, you can see that this thruster angles down slightly, which means that more upwards thrust is on this side of the helicopter. But if you look over here, at this side, if I press the button again, this one angles up slightly, which means that it's gonna get less lift on this side. So you see that those two blades are actually pitching in opposite directions. One's giving itself more upwards thrust, and the other one's giving itself less upward thrust. And the same thing happens if I want to go forward or backwards. Watch. So now this one is pitching up, while this one is pitching down. So that will give the rear end more upwards thrust, and the front end less upwards thrust, which will also change the pitch. Now, What's happening with this is if I keep it, let's say, in this direction. So now watch. See, the whole swash plate is now angled down to the left there. So that means that any rotor blade that passes this side will point upwards. And then as that rotor, as that blade rotates around the aircraft and gets to this side, it'll then be pointing not quite far as up because it'll be on the down end over here. So basically, every 180 degrees rotation, the blade itself will change its pitch, which will keep thrust on one side and less thrust on another side throughout the entire um, cycle. Now, if this isn't already complicated enough, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your mind a little bit more here. What you would expect, say, if I want to pitch. I'm going to pitch my nose forward, right? If I want to pitch my nose forward, you would expect that you would want to put more thrust on this side here, right? Like this. You can see that the rear of the swash plate lifts up, and that makes this thruster point down more, right? Because that'll apply more thrust to the back side, which would point the nose forward. But that is not what happens. This control right here is actually going to pitch me or roll me, rather, to the left. If I want to roll forward, or if I want to pitch forward, I have to do this. Yeah, I have to give more thrust to this one. Oh, no, sorry, uh, to, to this one right here. If I want to pitch forward, I have to give more thrust to my left side. And what that is, is, is a phenomenon called gyroscopic precession. And what that means is that when you apply force to a rotating object like this 
propeller or this rotor right here, the force doesn't take effect until 90 degrees after where it's applied. So if I apply an upward force to this side right here, then the upward force won't take effect until it gets 90 degrees through which cycle. So that means 90 degrees from right here is the rear, and that is going to give the rear more thrust. And I'll show you, I'll do it right here for you. Now watch the swash plate. You can see that it's applying upwards force to the left side of the helicopter. Now I'm going to turn it on. Oop, turn it on. And now watch, I'm going to apply force to the left side of the helicopter. And we'll see what happens. Alright, I'm applying force to the left now. And you can see it's not rolling. And it's not pitching forward because I'm actually not off the ground yet. There we go, now you can see it's starting to pitch forward. Alright, turn it off. Alright, now watch, I'm going to give it, um more in the back like this so you can see the rear of the swash plate is going upwards and what do you think is going to happen make your guesses right now if i if i apply pressure to the back like this that means that the thrusters in the rear are given going to give more upwards thrust what direction do you think that this helicopter is going to go all right well let's find out i now have the rear of the swash plate angled upwards and we're going to see, is it going to pitch forwards? Nope, you can see it actually rolls to the left. So that is gyroscopic precession in scrap mechanic. So that's how this is all working. Let's see if we can uh, give a demonstration. So watch, I'm going to, I have the swash plate down right now. Now as I get, raise it up like this, collective pitch is causing all of those thrusters to point downwards and that gives me lift. Now if I want to roll, I want to roll it to the right, that means I'm going to have to lift the front end. So ready? Watch the front end of the swash plate. Front end lifts up, and I roll to the right. Is that weird or what? The back end lifts up, and I roll back to the left. Now, if you want to find out, like, if, you, if, if you're having trouble understanding this, I completely understand, because this is really complicated and not intuitive stuff. But, there is a place you can find out a lot of really awesome, more detailed information about this heli how helicopters work, and it's done in a really fun and interesting way. And there's a channel on YouTube called Smarter Every Day, and they have amazing content all of the time and they have an entire series on helicopter physics and i highly recommend if this stuff is at all interesting to you you should go check out that channel and learn uh, the real science behind how these helicopters work and it's awesome because they have a, um, a helicopter remote control helicopter pilot that is absolutely insane and they, they do demonstrations on his um on his remote control helicopter with crazy stunts and stuff like that so i'm going to leave a link on this on this uh video right here so you can go check that out as well kudos to eru the engineer for designing such a well-functioning replica of an actual helicopter like i have not seen a helicopter that actually works so realistically in the game and I, I didn't expect to actually be able to see that honestly so i'm really impressed with eru there and i think you guys you guys should go sub to him because all of his videos he has some really original creations and i know that he uh he has some other really cool stuff uh that he's releasing um, probably actually before this video comes out. So go check out his channel, Eru the Engineer. Subscribe to him and tell him I sent you. And I think that you guys are going to enjoy the creations that he has to offer as well. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned from this. I really do hope you guys learned something from this. Uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to make a more educational video. And I want to thank Eru for making that possible because I would not have even thought to build something like this. So if you guys like this, if you guys learned something, leave a like. If you guys want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to see something different, leave a comment. Let me know what else you guys want to see, because I am always down to hearing 
what it is that you guys are interested in for this channel because I have ideas of what I want to do but I am always open to ideas that I don't even know that I would want to do yet. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time on the Scrap Mechanist channel.